All right, next step is going to be um, we're going to look at not just having um, the one point that we're testing for. We can actually do multiple points, but I'll show you that when the time comes. But I'm actually going to show you how we can do this with a curve um, and create like really cool extrusions that are relative to the curve as well. You're going to like this. So, um, and I expect lots of oohs and ahs. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do is uh, take a um, copy of the closest point value thing. Um, so let's grab this and then pull it down here. And we're going to create sort of like a side thing. <clears throat> so in this case, what we're going to do is use the same number of values, uh, remapped figures, and, uh, and we're actually going to create sort of uh, an extrusion um, based off of, well, yeah. Well, we're not going to remap it the same way. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So let's go to, um, we're actually going to take, oh, let's see, these are closest points. We could do a curve divide points. Do I want those points? Hang on, I'm just trying to figure out what, oh, oh okay, all right, I know what I'm going to do. So we're going to do multiple points, um, but we're going to do the <coughs> points along a curve. Okay, so we're going to create a curve. Let me get rid of this guy. Um, and let's go to, actually, no, he can say. Um, let's go to curve, or no, I'm sorry. Let's create a curve in Rhino. So I'm going to click here, and I'm just going to create like a spline that sort of sweeps through. That's not exaggerated enough for me. So go something like that and something like this. Okay. Something like that is fine. You don't have to do it exactly the same way I do. You can make it as crazy or as simple as you want. Um, yeah. I just did a little interpolate curve. Um, all right. So we're going to reference that here in Grasshopper. So under params, I'm going to click on curve. Set one curve. Put that one in. Okay. Now. The difference here is we're not going to plug the curve in. We actually, the, the attractors that we're working with, they only work with points. It can be with one point or it can be with multiple points. So I'm going to divide this curve into multiple points. So under curve and division, we're going to use divide curve. This is the curve we're dividing. We can change the number of points. Um, I'm going to say like 5 to 25, but it doesn't really matter. So something like that is kind of enough. And then take um, the P value, the points list, and we're going to plug it into C. So now the difference here is that this list when you look at D, it's a little smaller in terms of its magnitude, right? You're not going to really have many points that are 200 and something away because there are more points that it's testing for. It is finding the single closest point of that list of points, and it's telling you every rectangle's distance from its closest point. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, um... <coughs> I'm going to drop that for a moment, uh, and let's go to, um, we're going to, instead of scaling this one, well, I mean, we could scale it and do the remap, but I'm going to actually just use these scaled rectangles, and instead of scaling them, I'm going to extrude them relative to this point, uh, these points, I should say. So let's go to um, transform, affine, and scale or I'm sorry, uh, surface, freeform, and extrude. And what do we need when we're extruding something? Amplitude. amplitude. Not always, but most of the time. Go to vector, vector, amplitude. And um, amplitude is going to need magnitude and direction. So we're going to add the direction as unit Z. 
that goes in here, and the values we're extruding are these. So look at that. We've got these things um, that are starting to extrude, but they're all extruding the same height. Now we're missing one thing. We need to create numbers for this. Um, so what I want to show you is a different way of creating and mapping numbers. Um, let's see. Let's go to um, params and let's go to input and we're going to use what's called the graph mapper. Looks like that. Basically it looks like nothing. Um, so when you plug those values in and then you plug um, this in to F, it's going to probably not do anything for a little bit. But uh, let's see, we're going to go uh, right click and let's go to graph types and you'll see a bunch of um, different types of graphs, right? They're all different mathematical formulas for remapping numbers, right? So it's a formula that is taking the domain and it's creating a relationship between the numbers of that domain. So it's no longer a linear formula. This is a linear formula. It takes the, the lowest value and the highest value and everything is directly proportional to that along a 45 degree angle up a map. So basically it's like, um, this is your graph map. So what we're going to do is um, pick one that's a little different. So I'm going to use um, the Koenig one. How did you get that graph again? Uh, right click and go to graph types. <coughs> and then you just click on Koenig and it should um, start remapping for you. So let me see what my output value. Oh, I, whoops, my bad. I, you're not supposed to put it in F. That was stupid. Um, put it in A. And I'm getting, not getting the results I needed here. Hang on. 520. Just a second. Oh, sorry. I had the wrong one. Not Conan. Um, right click, go to graph types, and let's go to power. There we go. Yeah. Oh, you got a wall there, too. It's like Jurassic Park in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I wanted it to be um, relative to these points, but what you got to be aware of, though, is that here where the points are few and far between and there's like less um, density, it's very easy to read it as like a curved valley. But when you kind of zoom up a little bit, notice how it kind of, you know, sort of flutters out up here. Like there's a point here, there's a point there, there's a point there. And you can kind of see the circle that it's creating around that particular point. Yeah. Um, so if you don't want to see that level of, uh, that lowest level of resolution, increase the number of points and it'll get smoother. Does that make sense? Now it's super smooth. But if I go down to like three points or two points, you'll really see those points. See? Like it's very apparent that there's a point there. So that's resolution. Okay, and then you can change this too. So with the power function, it's basically taking um, each um, value of extrusion and it's multiplying it to the second power, I think. Um, so you can kind of reduce the height and influence of that extrusion by kind of pulling the, the power map up, or you can um, increase it quite, I mean, it's exponential, so it's gonna go up really fast, but. Okay, so um, what questions do you have with that? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you time to get caught up on it. Um, but uh, yeah, so it does how Sci -Arc basically this. How SciArc does their stuff? Yeah. Um, a lot of schools will use stuff like this. Yeah. 
um, but not just iron. It's pretty powerful. So no questions, just catching up. Okay. So, well, I guess in, in summary, right, what I will, oh, there's one other thing I wanted to do, and I forget where the tool is, but cap, you know, sometimes when you do an extrusion and it doesn't have the top and bottom, you can use cap holes and it'll enclose them and make them solid. See that? Now they're solid. Okay. Um, all right, so get caught up. Um, and then you can ask your questions and all that jazz. And then, um, yeah, we'll see about the other stuff we want to do.